Hey, this video is going to show how to make this exact resume in Google Docs, so let's hop right into it. To make it easier to fit everything on one page, I'm going to update to half inch margins. So if I click File and go down to Page Setup, it'll give me the option to update that. So I just make this a half inch on every side. Great, next we're going to put in a table here where we can put our name and our contact information. So you just go up to Insert do a table and do a two by one table. So in the left column here, you're just gonna type your name. And then what you're gonna wanna do is update that font to be whatever font you wanna use on your resume. Now I think it defaults to Arial, that's fine. Um, I choose Verdana for this one, I think it's a little bit better. And I bump the font size down to 10. Now I want this to be the font used throughout the document. So with it still highlighted, I can click the style drop down and then click normal and say update normal to match. So now you can see if I come over into this right table cell here and I start typing my contact information, it's the same font that I just made my default. All right, so they need a way to contact you. So you're gonna put your phone number, you're gonna put your email and you're gonna put your street address over here in the right box. All right, I know you're thinking this looks pretty ugly, but we're gonna clean that up right now. So if you just highlight everything in this table, and then you right click and do table properties down here. We're going to clean this up. So first thing we'll do is get rid of any cell padding that will push everything out to the edge. Next thing you want to do is this column where your name is. Again, go into table properties and then you're going to align this to the bottom. Great, and then we're going to take all your contact information. So highlight that and then click this right align button up here. You can also just do command R or control R. Now we want to bump the font size up for your name and just pick whatever looks good. Everybody's name is a different length. All right, so now we want to get rid of this hideous border. Uh, so if you just highlight everything in the table and click these three dots up here, you should have a border thickness and just change it to zero point. So now below this table, if you hit enter and in all caps, you write the word skills, hit enter twice, write the word experience, hit enter twice, and then write the word education and hit enter once. These are going to be your three sections and then what we'll do next is just format it. To do that, just double click skills and then change the font size. I think 18 looks pretty good for this. And then you want to add a little bit of space before and add a little bit of space after your paragraph. We're going to do one more thing to help these sections stand out. If you come up to format and go to paragraph and styles, there's borders and shading. Just add a bottom border. That's looking how we want. So now we're going to go up to this format painter and we're going to just click experience and click education. Now with your cursor below skills here, we're going to go back up to that insert and we're going to add in a table. This time it'll be a three by one table. It's going to be a three column uh, skill section here. And once again, we want everything lined up to the edges. So if we highlight, right click and go into table properties, we can bump that cell padding down to zero. So now in this left column, I need to add a bullet list. So you just come up to the bullet list button here and then all I'm doing here is adding some skills that I have from my work experience and making sure that whenever possible I can match keywords from the job description. So what that's going to do is help it so that not just recruiters but also any scanners or systems they put your resume through see you as a higher match for this job posting. And this should probably go without saying but make sure you actually have these skills. Um, lying on your resume is no joke. Uh, you don't want to face fines or prison time. You can see once again we've got a table with an ugly border so if I highlight the whole thing and go up to the border options I can just put it at zero point and that gets rid of the border. Also for whatever reason it looks like it added a paragraph above the table so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now if I come under experience we are done with tables now. Right here all you're going to do is put your dates that you worked at your most recent job. If you're still employed there, you can just go ahead and put present for the end date. Otherwise, just follow the same date format. I like to just use month and year. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to assume that you're still employed there. And the next thing we're going to do is click the two up here in the ruler. And that'll let us add a left tab stop. And all that's going to do is push all your information about this job entry over to the right. Now, if I hit tab, it places me at that tab stop. And then I want to put bold font and I want to put the job title that I have unbold the font, put a comma, put the company name, and then I like to put a dash and the city and state that it was in. Hit enter to come down to the next line and then 
you're going to add a bulleted list and for whatever reason the bullet lists don't follow the tab stop so I'll show you how we can fix that. So I just added it and then I up in the ruler I just want to drag this indent arrow so that the arrow is at about the two and a half inch mark. And that's going to indent it under the job title. And here's where you're going to start adding you know accomplishments and, and things you're proud of from your job that you're at. You want to quantify those whenever possible. So, you know, if you managed a team, you can put managed a team of 10 employees. You also want to focus on specific accomplishments or achievements that you're comfortable speaking to in a job interview. Another trick here is to start each bullet point with an action verb. And what that shows is that you're an action oriented employee. It shows that you have results and it's consistent and it makes it easier to read. And lastly, you want to make sure that in these description, these bullet points here, that you are matching keywords and phrasing from the job description wherever possible. And now that we have one job entry in, we can just hit enter a couple times and then copy and paste that same job entry for each of your other jobs. And you're just going to go from your most recent to your oldest job entry here. And then all you'll have to do after that is update the dates update the job titles, company name, job descriptions, etc. But the cool thing is the formatting is already done for you, which is super nice. Now here under the education section, I'm going to follow the same format. So I'll put the date that I graduated. You can put, you know, graduated month and year. You can say graduating month and year if you haven't graduated yet. Uh, you can just put the month and year if you want. You can kind of handle this however you want to. And next you're going to click the two up in the ruler again and enter another left tab stop. And then you'll hit tab and follow the same format as above. So in bold font you're going to put the degree or certificate that you earned or that you're going to earn. Get rid of the bold, put a comma, put the name of your school or university. And then you want to put the city and state or location where that university or school is. And on a resume like this where you have plenty of years of experience under your belt, you don't have to put any bullet points or anything under your education entries. Now if you don't happen to have a lot of work experience, you can always just flip the experience and education sections and then follow the same advice that we did for experience here with the bullet points and you know focusing on keywords all under the education. And then you can put you know your limited experience at the bottom of the resume. Basically the idea is everything that's going to impress a hiring manager should go toward the top of your resume. Well that's our basic resume set up. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you found this helpful please be sure to let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe. Uh, it really helps support this channel. Thank you again.